In this unit, we're going to take a look at creating arrays in Revit, and that's arrays as in A double R A Y S, not erays as in E R A S E. So, just to clarify what an array is, an array is when you take an element, um, in this case, I've used a desk as an example. So, you can take an element and you can repeat that element a set number of times at a predetermined distance or space in between them. Now arrays come in two different flavors. We have a linear array where our selected component gets arrayed in a straight line along a straight path, hence the term linear array. And we also get what's called a radial array. Again, you can take a component and you can pick the center of rotation you can pick how many elements you want in that overall array, and then Revit will create that array for you. The finished array behaves almost like a group, i.e. you can move it around in one block. You can adjust the array once you've created it, so you can change the number of elements in the array, and I'll show you how to do that later on in this unit. So that is basically what arrays are. They come in two varieties in Revit, linear and radial. The array button can be found on the modify panel. So if we go to modify and the modify panel here and the array button is there, it's the four little squares. That's the icon for it. Whether you're creating a linear or radial array, you start the process with the same button here. Once you've activated that, then you get the option on the options bar to choose whether it's a linear or radial array that you're creating. So let's go ahead and create a linear array. I've got a desk here, a desk family. So first of all, I select the component. I now activate that array command. Remember the icon there on the modify panel. You can see the options bar changes to show me all the options for creating an array. Now, near the left-hand side, there is a toggle between linear and radial. That's where you get to choose which one you create. It can only be on one or the other at any one time. So let's do the linear first. So I'm going to toggle that over to linear. We now have an option called group and associate with a tick box. You can either have that on or off. Now what that does is if you leave that on, i.e. you group and associate, once you've created your array, the arrayed objects will behave as a group and they will retain their arrayed status. So at any point after that, you can come back to your array, click on one of the elements and the array will come up and you can change the number of items in it and you can adjust it. If you untick that now, or you uncheck it, you still go ahead and create the array, but all the arrayed objects behave as separate elements. They don't retain any sense of being part of a group or an array. So I'm gonna leave that on for now. The next option is the number, i.e. how many elements do you want in your array? So let's put 10 in here. Moving further along the options bar, you now have another choice. We can select whether we're going to define the distance to the second object in the array or to the last. I'm going to show you how both of those work. So let's leave it on second to start with now. So pick a start point and I'm now defining my distance to the second object in the array. I'm gonna go for that there. And there is the completed array. There are 10 elements in it, because that's what we picked up here on the options bar. You can see they're all in a straight line. So I can now hit the modify button, which comes out of the array command, and there is our completed array. Now I'm just gonna do that one more time and we will set the distance to the final item in the array just to show you how that works. So I'm just going to put another desk component down. Select our component, hit array, check it's on linear, leave group and associate on. Let's go for eight items this time. 
and we're going to select the distance to the last item in the array. So pick my start point, I'm going to snap to the corner of the desk, it doesn't matter where we put this, in fact let's go at an angle and finally modify to come out of the array command and you can see our second array here consists of the eight items the path that we've set at the on a diagonal and we specified the distance from the first item to the last one so Revit has then equally spaced out all the intermediate elements in the array Let's now take a look at creating a radial array. So again, working with our furniture component, I'm going to select the desk, choose the array command off the modify panel. Remember to take a look at the options on the options bar now. We need to toggle this over to radial, so hit that button there. Leave group and associate on, we talked about that before. Right, the number of items in the array, let's have 12. Again we can select the distance to the second item in the array or to the last and we can choose the angle we want the array to go through. Now just before we actually create the array just want to take a look at the object itself where you'll notice the pivot point. This is the center of rotation of the array the vast majority of the time you're going to need to relocate this center of rotation. If you don't and you go ahead and create the array, in this instance all the desks will just be superimposed on top of each other, which is probably not what you're after. So we're going to move the center of the array off the object and now when the array is created the object will be arrayed in this arc around that center point. So really important not to forget to move that center of rotation to where you need it to actually be. Okay, I'm going to actually specify an angle. I'm gonna put 360 degrees in. So our array will go in a full circle and it will consist of 12 elements all equally spaced. So I've put the angle in there, hit the enter key on my keyboard, and Revit immediately creates the array and you can see it's actually rotated the object as it goes round the path. If you chose the group and associate option when you created your arrays you can then go back to them at any point in the future and make adjustments. So here are the three arrays we created earlier and let's go ahead and edit them now. So if I go and click on any of the elements in this top array, you can see that the array lights up. If I hover over, it tells us there are eight elements in it. So go ahead and click on the number there. And I'm going to change that to 12. You can see Revit's adjusted the spacing. Now we chose the distance to the last one so that's been maintained so the spacing between each element has been closed up in order to fit a total of 12 objects in there. Moving down to the second one again go and select an element click on the array number I'm going to change that to 15. Now if you recall when we created this array we specified the distance to the second object so now because we've increased the number of elements in the array all it's done is add them to the end. Now if I go and select any of these elements and move its position notice how Revit maintains that consistent relationship between all elements. And finally, the radial array we just created. Again, select. I can change the radius from the pivot point. So let's change that to four and a half meters. And again, I can also change the number of elements in the array. Let's increase that to 17. 
And that completes this unit. To get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point, you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.